gosh, I just deleted my intro. <laughs> anyway, um, hello everyone. My name is Kleinus and welcome to my channel. For those who, of you who don't know me, I am a mixed media artist. And in this video, I'm just going to show you how I made this wooden canvas mixed media style. Right here. And yes, I have actually filmed a more uh, professional looking, I, I can't say it's professional looking, but a more decent um, intro, but I accidentally deleted everything and now I'm filming <laughs> and it's like a vlog style. Anyway, um, this video will be like um, half an hour long, so I tried to compress everything as much as I can unfortunately it's like a 12 to 15 hours of work but um, yeah so grab yourself a snack or something to drink and please keep on watching first off we are going to prime our canvas with this Krylon which is a leftover white spray paint after drying the spray paint overnight, I am going to uh, paint it again with a white gesso. You can skip this step but I just wanted to prime everything with an acrylic gesso as well. Then dry the gesso with a hair dryer. Next up, we will be doing an image transfer technique which would be a first time for me to do. So right now, I'm just choosing a cardstock and hope for the best that the image will transfer onto the canvas. Now, I've watched a few tutorials on doing image transfers using a Mod Podge but I haven't really uh, seen a tutorial where they use a cardstock and uh, transfer the image onto the canvas so if there is a tutorial like that out there I would love to see it and if you guys could link it down below that would be great um, yeah so um, I'm just coding uh, the cardstock with Mod Podge and the same with the wood canvas just giving a good amount of coat for hopefully for the image to transfer so from the few videos that I've seen once you've adhered everything onto your canvas you should air out all of the uh, bubbles that you, you're seeing on the surface in order for it to smooth out and everything should be flat but as you can notice here that I was too lazy and didn't do that but after making sure that the Mod Podge is dry and <clears throat> trying to peel off the the rest of the can the, the card stuck it was okay but I will insert a little clip here where I will tell you my review well guys I think um, the image transferring using the Mod Podge was 10% successful I would say I'm just going to show you the close-up <coughs> of how it looks like for me I think I can work around it but I don't I, I'm not sure we will see we will see how it goes so as you can see here there's like a little bit of the image <coughs> picking through I tried I'm not sure it's <coughs> because I primed the canvas already with a gesso that's why it didn't transfer successfully but I kind of like the texture that it's giving right now so we'll work around it Anyway, moving on, I've decided to push through this project and right now I'm just going to put some stencil designs Everything that I will be using, I'll be linking them down below in the description or you can find them in my blog um, Creations.blog. 
As always, I'm going to use a modeling paste in order to add more designs and details on the canvas. When you're using a modeling paste and a stencil, make sure that you're not lifting the stencil and carefully applying the paste onto the canvas so you get that crisper look of the details from the designs of the stencils. After applying the modeling paste, dry it with a hair dryer. Now, I really like to use different types of stencils on my projects, especially with bigger canvases. And I love using cursive writing or calligraphy type of stencils. And if I had a chance to buy more in the future, I would definitely go for these types of stencils again. So for the next part, I will be applying gesso on top of the stencil designs. I know this might cover the initial image transfer that we did, but that's okay. I At least I can still get the texture from that image transfer. After drying the gesso, now I'm going to use this bow bunny um, silicone butterfly design stamps and an archival ink and just going to put designs where there is no uh, stencil and modeling paste on it this face it's like you're building your main background so that's what I'm trying to do right now and for the next part, I will be priming all of my embellishments that I know I'm going to use and so that it's easier for me to do my composition later. After all the embellishments are dry, now I'm looking for a design that I could use for my little frame resin that you can see here. And so I just wanted a subtle design background. Um, so I'm just going to go for this little bird right here and just going to cut out the bird so it fits on the frame. So for most of the adhering that I'll be doing in this project. I'll be using this uh, heavy gloss by Liquitex. It's a gel medium. It's a perfect adhering agent for doing mixed media projects, especially if it's like a little bit heavier than a paper. And this is what I'm going to use for most or for the entire project. Next, I am tearing up this a uh, little vintage cardstock from Tim Holtz and I just wanted to have a background of the writing and the vintage look and uh, the same adhering it with the uh, gel medium heavy gloss gel next part I'll still be adding more of the t uh, torn pieces of that cardstock because I just wanted to fill the rest of the bottom part of that background that I'm doing making sure that it's taking the shape of the wood canvas Basing from the colors of that cardstock that I've used, I am now going to color my background with uh, the vintage brownish metallic acrylic paint. And whenever I use an acrylic paint, I would use water to thin it out a little bit and also to for the paint to be able to get into the seams and grooves of the stencil design. Once I am satisfied with how everything looks, I am going to use a paper towel and absorb the extra, extra, excess water and paint 
um, and then using more water to disperse the paint into the grooves um, of the canvas. I know the colors look pale on the video or on the camera, but trust me, in real life it looks great. Now I'm going to use another vintage gold acrylic color, which is in a warmer tone, and I really like using this acrylic paint. And the same technique that I've used before, I'm going to use water and then tilting the canvas and using a paper towel to absorb the excess paint. Next up will be embellishments and starting off we are adhering this uh, embellishment that I made using hot glue sticks and the molds from Prima, Mar Prima Marketing that I will be linking down below. I've actually recently learned this technique by watching one of their live um, Prima Marketing uh, live tutorials in Facebook. Um, yes, so initially I wanted to use the gel medium to adhere this embellishment but I wasn't sure if it's going to stick. So right now I'm using the A E6000 glue to adhere this embellishment flat on the canvas. I won't normally recommend E6000 glue because of the smell and it's a very, I feel like it's a very high chemical <laughs> adherent. Next, we are going to use the gel medium to adhere this lace that I bought long time ago from Fabric Land in Saskatoon. Um, I wanted to um, edge my canvas using this lace and it will add a decent detail on my canvas. Of your fibbing, I'm sick of your fiction. All of it, nothing but figments. And I used to listen, but I know better now. So this time it's different. Yeah, I can see right through your bullshit. I want the truth by the time you told yeah. it. You know how it goes. She's putting on a show. Yeah, you know how it goes. Now you see her, and now you don't. Now it's time to adhere the resin with the bird image that I made earlier on with this um, wood designs that I bought long time ago as well. And I'm just trying to um, not really make a focal point but just to add a design on that empty space on the right top corner. Now I like doing this because um, it really adds uh, more interest on my canvas. And I know I'm lazy on this part and I use the E6000 glue to make sure that it won't fall off on me. And now we are going to start building our focal point. I really wanted to use the cross uh, wood design as my focal point because um, the lady that I'm going to give it to is a very good, um, one of the very good parishioners in our church. And yes, that's what I wanted to um, base my design on. What I found was when I'm making my design on the focal point, focal point, um, it's like a puzzle that you have to figure out what really works together. I know it's kind of hard to describe because initially I posted on my Instagram that I have a layout and this layout is totally different from the layout that I posted on the Instagram. It like design and artwork changes as you work I find and I don't know if it's me but that's how I 
have done my designs in the past. Now in this next part, I am trying to figure out a way so that I can also use all of the materials that I have uh, in my stash and work on uh, making sure that the theme that I'm going for is still tied in together and not all over the place. And that's what I'm trying to figure out right now. <laughs> it's it's funny, it's like tiny movements of every embellishment really makes an impact in my opinion. And once you've uh, once you've seen the look that I the look or the design that you're looking for, um, right now I'm adhering my first base and then using again that lace. Um, right now I'm trying to layer everything that I can do and that makes sense to me at this moment. And now for this part, I'm looking for another type of, um, is it a cardstock? I don't know what it's called, but I wanted to layer another piece of paper um, so that I have the space underneath that uh, framed resin uh, to put more embellishments and to add more dimension on my, on my design. Now as you notice, I'm choosing the chipboard's color with pink accents that still look vintage and that I think that's what I'm going to use as my accent color for this project. And now to add more texture and details, I am going to use a modeling paste onto the wooden uh, designs embellishment. So far, so good. Actually, I can stop here, but I decided to move on and add more um, embellishments onto my project. I really like to use this uh, big chunk of the embellishment that I made uh, from Prima Marketing Molds. And basically, it's like a... To me, it looks like a, an abstract of an angel's wings, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Once most of our embellishments are adhered, it's now time to color with uh, our accent colors. Starting off with this burgundy, which is like a vintage pinky. It's not mauve, I don't think. Anyway, it's a perfect accent color that is similar to those chipboard colors. And same technique, using water and acrylic paints and using... A paper towel to absorb excess paint and water just trying to blend everything seamlessly
to add more accent color gradient i am just going to color this wood design with that burgundy and a little bit of brown combination um, i love using the wood laser woodcut designs because they really absorb the concentration of the colors and they are perfect once it's dry i figured i should stamp it again with those butterflies that i've used um, and with this black ink it also ties uh, the color scheme together Now if you remember that bird image that I had earlier on, it has like a yellowish, warmer, orange type of color schemes into it. And so I figured maybe I should also use those colors to tie everything together. And that's what you're seeing here, but um, not really concentrating on the yellow so much. Just a little bit will do. And yeah, I think it looked great afterwards. And more blending of the acrylic colors is recommended as much as possible. Um, I, now I'm using this vintage gold that is in warmer tone that as an accent again in order to lift all those beautiful details from the canvas. Now I'm going to start again with the second part of the embellishments, which is flowers. Um, the colors of the flowers are not really the same as um, my color scheme right now. So I'm just looking for those plain colored um, flowers from um, Premium Marketing. And I was so happy when I found these chipboards um, that are in plain color. It's actually like a light brownish color, which is perfect. Um, for my project and it also ties the colors of the flowers into the canvas. Now this is another first that I'm trying right now. It's the splash of colors. Um, I recently learn this from the many youtube tutorials from other mixed media artists that i've watched which um it's actually a pretty great technique um and right now i am going to stick more i mean one last chipboard and this um statement which is thankful because it's like a thank you uh thank you token to that lady at our parish I really love how everything is looking together. Those splashes of white and the burgundy are great and adds more details and interest on the canvas. We are almost done and I just wanted to add one little tiny detail um, on that bird because it's a little bit crook head <laughs> if you can notice anyway so yeah I'm just uh, adhering another resin or no it's not a resin the uh, mold embellishment that I made using Prima molds um, and then in order to tie everything together another um, accent color painting um, uh, mode right here. Sorry, I'm running out of words. It's kind of like a I've been trying to do this voice over for more than an hour already. And so yeah, the same techniques. And yes, yeah, so I think that's about it. Oh no, I'm still doing some accent colors here and there. <laughs> Yeah. 
And for the very last part, I am going to <laughs> do more embellishments using this vintage color theme bow bunny jewels. Um, I think this is the second pack that I bought from bow bunny. I really love the color schemes. Anyway, I just used a few, although we can go overboard, but I'm not doing that work <laughs> on this project. And to finish off, I'm going to use the, the same gel medium gloss that I use for adhering. It's also a good medium to finish off your project. It's going to look glossy. And there is also a matte version if you would prefer. So yes, I would go over this into that or onto that um, thankful sentiment and everything else in between. Alright, that is it you guys. If you made this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. If you like these types of video, please subscribe to my channel. I know I'm still new in YouTube and I'm still trying to figure out a lot of things basically. And yes, I am planning to um, do projects or post videos once a week or once every two weeks. I'm still trying to build my content. Anyway, um, if you'd like to see me on Instagram, uh, I will post the current projects that I'm working on. It's Kleinus Creations. And every project has a story behind it, or that's what I thought, or yeah, that's what I think. Um, and they will be posted in my blog, Kleinusgrations.blog. Um, every materials that I'm using using in my project or have used in my project they will be i will try my best to link them down below or not or if not i will post them in my blog as well and i hope you guys find this video tutorial um, inspiring or helpful in some ways um, that i've shown my techniques and i will see you on the next one bye